Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Welcome to another episode of the Acquia Podcast. This week there is no live video. I am really, really thrilled to be talking with Tom Erickson, the CEO of Acquia. Tell me why I should be considering Drupal 8 for my organization. How, how do you think it's going to change the landscape for businesses, governments, and other organizations? Well, I, I think uh, as organizations, we, we use this term called digitalization of, of uh, the enterprise or of the organization. So I think it's pretty easy to see the impact that Amazon has had on business broadly <laughs> across markets. Um, it was foretold 15 years ago, but it's really happening now. And so traditional businesses um, have realized that uh, if you're in retail, that Amazon is probably your biggest competitor, no matter what kind of business you're in. And Amazon is something called we call a digital first or digitally native business. And that uh, disruption in the retail business is <coughs> causing organizations to say, we have to be a digitally first business as well. In other places, you know, business efficiencies and global markets are causing them to think about how they will become uh, digital in their nature. So organizations in life sciences who are doing physician certification online as opposed to in person, sending a sales rep out to their organization. That's a digitalization effort. Organizations in, in um, tech who are providing services through a community um, as uh, uh, instead of large call centers and saving tens or hundreds of millions of dollars through that process. This is all something we call digitalization of these businesses. And what's exciting for me is that Drupal 8, um, through its architecture improvements, is able to do that better than any other system on the market. And uh, we're proud as part of Acqui to be able to offer that in a really in a complete, you know, almost SaaS-like environment. So... Um, it, it gets me really, really excited about the potential. So we're speaking, it's the end of July 2015. There are less than 15 critical issues left uh, for before Drupal 8 can go to release candidates. Uh, last time I looked, it was 10 or 11. I haven't looked this morning. But uh, we're getting close to general availability, you know, the 8.0.0 release of this thing. Acquia is, well, has made a bold statement, has taken a step and said, we're going all in on Drupal 8 now. Yeah. What, what does that mean? And, and why has Acquia done that? Well, I think um, sometimes, uh, particularly around Drupal organizations, are occasionally a little bit shy about saying, Hey, uh, I want the software to mature. I need. Um, I want to have some of the contrib modules already available, and there's occasionally a lag there. Once again, these are risks um, that are are there relative to a brand new release, and consistent with our approach around Drupal in general. You know, we've we've assessed it, we've taken a look at, it, and we've committed already to. Um, some customers, and so uh, that we will mitigate that risk. We will help organizations adopt Drupal 8 now if that's their preference. Uh, we will help with the porting of modules to ensure that that experience is extremely straightforward. Um, as you mentioned before, Jam, we have this group, the Office of the CTO, which we call Octo, um, which coordinates efforts with the community. It's a whole team of people and they will um, be very proactively coordinating and prioritizing what needs to be done. Uh, Acqui is going to look at um, how we get that done in a very expedited manner. Uh, we're going to be investing heavily 
both in terms of resources and community outreach and community sponsorship to be able to accelerate this. And effectively, for someone adopting Drupal 8 now, completely mitigating the risk associated with that and being able to, in a very fast manner, uh, go live with Drupal 8. And in fact, we've already helped a couple of organizations do that. So we have people that are live. We have our own experience with uh, Drupal.com, which is uh, uh, a site that we uh, maintain on a pro bono basis for, for Dries, who, who owns the domain. Um, and um, we've got a lot of experience with Drupal 8, and we're excited by working with our partners as well on this. So we've reached out to our partner community, and they're very enthusiastic. Um, and so it's not just a, an Acquia alone effort. This is something we're doing with um, a couple of dozen of our, our best partners who, who've done that, and you know, kudos to organizations like Chapter 3 who have already been working with us and Amazie Labs uh, for several months on these projects. So. so we've drawn a line in the sand and we've said, this thing is so great, we are confident we can deliver the kind of uh, help and experience that we've, been, that we've been guaranteeing with Drupal over the last seven or eight years. This thing is ready enough and all of the rough edges and corners we now that we, we find along the way. Now, this is the perfect opportunity just to sand them off, and, and we're, this, this thing is ready for real business. Exactly. The time and the money and the effort that we are spending for Drupal 8 All In to get Drupal 8 out the door, are we coordinating with the Drupal Association and their D8 Accelerate program? C8 Accelerate is something that's really specific to development of Drupal 8 Core. Um, the monies that are donated there are specifically allocated to Drupal 8 Core and uh, are not used outside of that. So, um, yes, we are coordinating the extent that you know our own Octo team has members on the Drupal board and coordinates with that group. But uh, our efforts uh, around Drupal 8 are much broader. Uh, and include all kinds of aspects of Drupal and, and not just Drupal Core. So it's a it's definitely a complementary effort. We we help out with contrib modules, with concepts, with other coalitions, and and Drupal Eight Accelerate is focused on Core and training and uh, uh, assessments for organizations around how ready they are for Drupal Eight, uh, etc. So it's really a very very broad program. Sure. CH2M Hill, Manhattan Associates, Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, they're already running live websites on Drupal 8. Can you talk about some of the early success stories that we've had and, and how they show the promise of, of Drupal 8? Well, these are, um, these are not the, uh, you know, there are a few examples and they're successful in the sense that they've, these are organizations that have moved from other products over to Drupal 8. Um, and they are experiencing Drupal and excited by it because they haven't experienced the wonder of Drupal before this, and that's their biggest excitement. They're excited they're on the Drupal 8 platform because that is the platform of the future, and as they're able to um, grow their uh, digital initiatives, their digital experience initiatives, they'll be able to grow alongside of Drupal 8, and that's the real success. Um, they're they're serving up these experiences with complete reliability. Um, none of these had downtime. Uh, I know that because I, I'm aware of every one of our sites that experiences downtime, and we do root cause analysis uh, around all of that. So um, there's a lot of success there. And so it was that success that really led us to realize we could offer that to everybody and anybody. Tell me about how de-risking Drupal 8 now allows a better return on investment, on innovation and investment in Drupal uh, for, for anyone who chooses to do that. Well, it's, uh, you know, Drupal 8 is a platform which will be supported for the next 10 years. Um, and it's something where uh, getting on board with that today can help you to um, realize that, that uh, new architecture that you talked about that, multi-channel capability of not serving up just pages, but serving to 
mobile devices of all ill to serving up uh, feeds like Twitter and Instagram, and Facebook, or internal systems, and, and really digitalizing your business, integrating with back-end uh, ERP or, or uh, marketing automation systems. So, you know, organizations that are thinking ahead organizations that want to get a head start on what's going to happen over the next five years, next 10 years in, uh, in business, not just in marketing, but in business in general, um, can get a head start uh, by moving on to Drupal 8 today. I'd like to just highlight a couple things that, about Drupal 8 that are different than previous releases. Drupal 8 has been fully tested through the entire um, complex and long development cycle, and it's, as far as I can tell, by far the most stable beta version that we've ever had. A whole bunch of really important functionality has been moved into the core so that even now in beta and when we get to 8.0, it's going to be more functional and more usable and more bug-free than any version of Drupal has been before. So, so even from a, I want to build my own site on it, I don't have Acquia's support behind me level, Drupal 8 is, is really, really great now. And with the availability of, of, of beta to beta upgrade paths, I think that uh, you know, it's a sign that it's really, really time um, for all of us to be <clears throat> helping get this across the finish line. I'm, I'm incredibly excited about it. I've been excited about it for a couple of years, but now, uh, you know, I can feel it coming. It's really, it's really, yeah, it's a great moment, I think, or it's about to be, let's say, a great moment. Is there anything that you wish I had asked you that I haven't asked you yet? Well, I, I think, uh, I think one of the most important things of Drupal's evolution, and Drupal 8 will contribute to this, is the fact that it started out in what I would call um, open source friendly industries. People like media and entertainment where Drupal is very widely used, higher education, government. And today we see a tremendous adoption in other industries, whether that's, as I mentioned before, in consumer packaged goods or what those of you in the UK might call FMCG, whether that's in retail, whether that's in life sciences, whether that's in financial services. Um, these areas have really begun to discover what Drupal can do for them, and uh, um, I really believe that Drupal's future is extremely broad in a number of industries. We're starting to see large digital agencies adopt it, digital agencies that previously did not have Drupal practices. This is something that's very important for um, the market as a whole. Um, as these organizations who, who work with large enterprises globally, multi-brand enterprises, um, are starting to realize that the creative freedom, uh, which is a term that one of these agencies said is their, uh, the reason they work with Drupal um, in favor of, of the other uh, proprietary systems. They, this creative freedom that they're offered is something that I think today's marketer, uh, today's business executive who wants to create a branded digital experience uh, is absolutely has to have. At the same time, without sacrificing issues of governance that I talked about earlier around Site Factory. So we're entering a new phase of, of the market, uh, a new phase where organizations can roll out campaigns, roll out websites that they've never been able to do before because they can do that more economically and faster than ever before. And, you know, as Acqui, we're excited to be a part of that. We're excited to be able to do that with Drupal 8. And uh, we really look forward to working with, um, you know, organizations out there on tackling, you know, problems that heretofore were not able to be uh, addressed. I've really enjoyed seeing and meeting people from new industries and new parts of the economy over the last few years as Drupal's pen penetration has really grown and, and the, the adoption, I should say, has really grown. And um, 
I've been I've enjoyed seeing some spillover of the community mentality back into the the different business communities and how people in education, people in uh, media, people even in pharmaceutical industries, life sciences start to uh, through Drupal, they start to talk with each other. They they have conversations with each other that they might not have had before, and they share best practices and they share ideas. And they're not just you know sharing this software that enables them to get their business done. In but they're also sharing ways of doing things together. I think it's a really um, from the idealistic perspective. I think it's a really I think it's a really nice sign that Drupal is getting something very very right. Tom, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. I want to give you the chance that I give everyone on the podcast. Please give me your shameless plug. My shameless plug. (laughs) Um, I actually, I'm not sure, Jam, if I have a shameless plug. Okay, give us a shameless plug for, for Acquia Drupal 8 All In. Quite frankly, if you are uh, an organization that's looking at a new digital platform, you'd be silly not to include Drupal and Acquia in your evaluation because of the innovation that is built into this system. Um, It integrates with everything that you might need, whether it's a marketing automation or analytic system that you already have in your business. So you don't have to rip and replace things. Um, And it provides you the ability to achieve pretty much precisely what you hope to achieve, whether that's a very creative front end using something like AngularJS, or whether it's uh, integrating to mobile dedicated mobile devices through APIs. Um, So, you know, I just encourage everybody who's thinking about how to digitalize their organization to to consider Drupal 8. And, you know, we'd love to help you at Acquia understand what that can bring to your business. Perfect. Hey, thank you so much. Thanks again for for taking the time to talk with me and enjoy the rest of your time at home in Wisconsin. Thanks. See you, Jim.